Good afternoon and welcome to Lunchtime Stories. My name is Kim Britz and uh, my wonderful co-host all the way from Fort Lauderdale, Florida in the USA, Lauren Britz, how are you doing? Good morning, Kevin. <laughs> I will say that this morning I got up and I walked outside and it was officially cold. So oh, no. cold as in, you know, just not that cold, but definitely a cool Christmas to the air today. And so we here in Florida are enjoying this, I think, because it's just <laughs> yes. the first, like it's a visceral feeling. You're like, ooh, is that what that feels what, like? What do you, call it? you call it a swamp or a, what do you call it, Tony? I call it the, <laughs> the tropical swamp. The tropical um, swamp, yeah, because it's like really humid and it's really, it's, the, it's really hot and, you know. It's hot. Yeah, I mean, it's the tropics and it's a swamp. It's an actual swamp. The Everglades um, National Park is right here and it's absolutely gorgeous. You know, if you've ever seen, uh, what's his name, Horatio on CSI Miami, it's kind of like that. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's like that. And um, it's always hot. Even, you know, during these times, we don't get as cold as other states that are absolutely brutally cold. Um, but this for us is just a beautiful, beautiful weather to be in. We're just all happy, I think. So it's awesome. Happy oh, winter. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I was chatting to someone in Egypt yesterday and they were saying, oh. yeah, no, they, they're so cold. So I said, so what's cold? And they're like, no, it's like 11 degrees. I'm like, that's not cold. <laughs> okay, okay, so this morning, yeah. yeah. It's like minus three and four and, you know. <laughs> so yeah, like, this okay, morning nice. was about 14 Celsius, which for us oh, is wow. in the morning, yeah. it's kind of like, oh, okay. But, um, and this is not an over-exaggeration. My partner used to live in South Dakota, if you know where that is, in the middle of the country, basically. <laughs> yes. And it's, it's very close to Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Minus 57. Fahrenheit with the wind chill. And I was like, that's not even possible. It was minus 57 with the wind chill. Basically, you cannot go outside at that point. You yeah. can't. You'll freeze to death. <laughs> I'm sure. I can't even imagine what but that's doing. But they do it. I don't know how they do it. So tell me. I know I can't do it in the winter. How, how is, uh, I mean, not, not that we're going to go into it. But how is, what is the situation with the politics? <laughs> I think if everybody's kind of on their own mission, I think everybody's just like, okay, it's over. You know, like the, the voting is over. What happens next is up to whatever they're up to in the court system. It, it is interesting. I, um, I did go on to a, a Republicans, her name is Candace Owens. Um, she's a she's my kind of person, even though I'm not a Republican. She's a moderate Republican, I think, that really speaks to me. And she was saying that um, if she'd been debunked a little bit on um, Facebook, that called one of her one of her statements false. And actually she went against them and she she won that one. Actually, they called out one of her statements as false, and it actually wasn't false. And that statement was actually that there has actually not yet been an official president-elect chosen. So even though in theory and in, in sort of like the media, we're, we're accepting that, uh, legally and officially, there has actually been no president-elect chosen yet. So... Yeah, it only happens on the 20th, right? It only happens on the 20th of January. Well, no, actually, that would be a handover. That would be the official okay. handover. Yeah. At this point, they normally would have a president-elect, but because it's being disputed, it cannot be officially stated. Even though people are unofficially stating it, it cannot officially be stated until all of that is sorted out. So yeah. we will we will just wait. And I think the American people, I'm sure a lot more are involved, but I think we're just kind of going with the holiday season and the you know the cold weather that's coming in, and we just want to get snuggly. I think. So in terms of uh, it being uh, the 1st of December, because we pre-record uh, some of these shows, um, one of the things that uh, the conversations that you and I have been having is COVID, uh, and not to bring up COVID the topic, but how COVID's affected our businesses. You and I are both small businesses in the world. Uh, we do amazing things, though. We get to <laughs> speak to amazing people and 
uh, and work with amazing brands. Um, so one of the one of the themes uh, for me that that I think is so relevant is uh, this week I also chatted to someone with regards to this week. I'm saying it's Tuesday, right? <laughs> We're recording this on Tuesday. But, but I mean, this week, yesterday, I spoke to someone around uh, about better, what is your, how do I, how to create a better business? Mm. And some of the things he touched on was um, resilience, which which we've, we've touched on before. But one of the things that we haven't spoken about, um, and it'd be interesting to, to sort of see how we compare notes on, on innovation. Um, yes. And I think, Ooh, I love it. You know, one of the key things is streamlining what's innovative, how are you tackling the new year, you know, all of that. So don't you want to kick off with, with some of the ideas that, that you have around innovation, especially, you know, in terms of small business? So what is your take on how, how to be innovative and how have you been in, in 2020? I love technology. I love machines. I love streamlining things and I really love to find ways to make things simple because while you know things can get very complicated I think some people get stuck there they're like it's it's only working if it's complicated and I'm like oh no 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 anything that's complicated can actually be streamlined to be simplified so that it's easier to do and it also gives you back your time so this is one of the things for me I've been trying to figure out how do I now, where I am in my business, and we've been affected by this virus, and you know, people have lost, my, including myself, uh, you know, income, and but nevertheless, without being disheartened, how am I going to prepare myself for next year? But yeah. learned that can do that for me. So, one of the biggest, most amazing things that I can give anybody, any advice on is you're running a business you need to use innovation to streamline and one of the things that I love to use the most is my CRM my customer relations management tool is a, like a godsend to me I have no idea how people run their businesses without these and there's a lot of big ones in the world so people are like well what's a CRM tool well it's a customer relations management tool and it's a hub that's designed, and there's a lot of different ones designed for a lot of different people in the world. They're normally a little bit generic and you have to set them up before you can start really getting into the flow. But once you get into that flow, it's just a container for absolutely every piece of information around your clients, around the, the projects you're doing with them. I mean, mine even tells me the weather. I'm a photographer, I need to know the weather. I own another company that's also quite weather specific. I need to know the weather all the time. And that's a tiny little thing, but it's quite a big deal around here where it rains every two minutes. So there's a lot of them. I've actually taken my tool and I've shared it with a lot of my own friends, my, my business friends. Yeah. And it has changed their lives. And the one thing I always hear from them that I totally agree with is that they were able to gain enormous amounts of time back because there's no more of these tiny menial tasks. It is, a, it is a tool in progress. So you're always using it and you're always refining it. But let me tell you what a lifesaver, what a time saver. So if I would say that my number one innovation in my business is definitely my CRM tool. I have a few others, but what do you think, Kev? You use the CRM tool? I, I don't at the moment use the CRM, um, but I do. So I'm definitely going to, that's definitely something that's on my radar. So I, I'm making notes as you talk. But one of the things that I do use, uh, we both use Calendly. Mm. Now, what's beautiful about Calendly, it connects to just about any calendar, and you can set up different time schedules. You can set up real uh, quick, easy, uh, like, well, here's when I'm available, and you can schedule it for different projects and different moments. So, you know, from mm. a coaching perspective, when I, how I set up Calendly is, uh, when I'm having one-on-one -on -one engagements, I want to do it quick and effective. So I schedule mm. that for 30 minutes, and I'll also call it a 30-minute discovery chat. And then I send that mm. out to people. Um, and uh, when I'm doing coaching sessions uh, or I'm doing um, – uh, or specifically coaching, um, you want to do at least an hour uh, uh, um, of 60 minutes uh, with someone. 
Uh, mm -hmm. And then I schedule that. But I also schedule everything in different time zones because I, I know that I have to take care of this. I know that I'm available uh, on a Tuesday to a Thursday for this kind of information or this work. Uh, these lunchtime sessions that, I, that, that we do, I schedule on mostly on Mondays, uh, recording, pre-recording them. So I, 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 I schedule everything because I know if I don't, I, I miss something. I sort of- That is a very good point. That is a very good point. And I, I think I kind of forget that sometimes because I'm so used to it now. But yeah. I cannot live without my calendar. <laughs> Just go on. To add to that, I want to. I must say that I use Calendly, but when I, uh, as a as a general rule, uh, and I, I I work on Mac predominantly. So mm, me too, me too. I love it. So what I've done is I've created shortcuts. So if you go to your, mm. if you go to your, and I'm sure there must be a one for for PCs. But if you go to your system preferences and click on keyboard, yeah. There is something called text, uh, and when you click on the top of that, you give your text a replacement ID. Oh. So, for example, I'll type in hashtag or, or um, LTC, which is lifestyle coaching, LTC one, and then I'll put a whole bunch of hashtags in one little line, which hmm. means I don't have to go and sit and type everything out. That, but I do that's that. Great with my Calendly as well. So, you know, when you're sending a, because you want to, like, when you're having an, like a conversation, you say, hi, don't you want to, can we have an online chat rather? It's so much better if we can connect with each other. Here is my Calendly link. Um, I look forward to connecting with you. That entire thing, I stick into my tech shortcuts notice. What a I great idea. I've never even so thought I, about that. <laughs> I go Cal, I, my, and my shortcut is Cal1. And as I hit enter, that entire sentence comes up. And I've literally saved myself about two minutes of typing. That's amazing. It's <laughs> so one of the things I promise. I've absolutely never thought about that. I mean, I know about the shortcuts. I just didn't even realize that I could go in there and actually create my own. It saves, for example, when I, I do a lot of the uploading of videos as well to YouTube. So I often have to hashtag everything. And I was like, it's so laborious. And I'm going, a lot of no, on, let, me, let me just hashtag. And the thing with YouTube is all you have to do is put uh, your, your, the word, comma, the word, comma, the word, and, and YouTube reads the comma as hashtag. Okay. So when you type and you click once, it goes, you can have 20 hashtags in there without wow. having to. So it literally saves, and I think shortcuts, saves me so much time. I use this shortcut methodology in connecting with people on LinkedIn as well. So I don't type, mm. you know, like, because when I want to connect with you on LinkedIn as well, I, I want you to connect with me more. And I say, uh, thanks for the connection. I really want you to, I'd love it if you followed my page because we connected and, 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 and I type all of that out and I screen or uh, copy that from my, where, wherever I'm um, typing it. And stick it into the, the shortcuts and you literally you have an entire information something that you would say often so for me yes. it's you would use every day all the time now it's interesting i'm thinking of the what you're just saying now with calendly and and the other ways of doing that and i actually do that in my crm tool with my emails you know there are certain yeah. emails that we just consistently send out over and over and over and over that don't require really a personalized touch and um, you can always add your personal into that as well as you're writing the email. But it's such a such a great idea to just, you know, it took me a little while to set it up. And every year I go in and I refine it and I change them as I need to. But what a lifesaver. What a lifesaver. Yeah. Absolutely. So these things um, definitely save time. Now, for me, success means time versus money in the yeah. sense of and freedom equals freedom. So like. How much time do I have to be free? And am I also sustaining life and, and creating? So that is just one of the greatest ways to save time. And I will say one of the other things that is really coming onto my plate as far as being innovative is actually human technology, setting up your army in a way. And, you know, I've lost a couple of friends and 
our colleagues and clients this year, but I realized yesterday I gained an army. Yeah. I gained an army because here I am suddenly and I'm able to delegate. So this was a bit of a weird, um, this was my level up. Yeah. And I'm still putting my army together. But the human technology that I used in two capacities was, one, I hired, I took the giant leap of hiring my business coach, beautiful Lindsay. She's amazing. Let me tell you, keep me on my toes. But she <laughs> has, I've given her permission to do so. And she has just tracked me and I've committed to it through so many things that would have been massive learning curves for me which are time consuming. So yes, I reached out, she's putting me through all of these um, obstacles and I, I now don't have to look forward to those learning curves on my own. So yeah. just, you know, it's like running a relay real fast, real quick. Then the other human um, innovation that I've used is finally getting myself to the point where I can get myself a virtual assistant, VAs. The newest craze in, in, I don't know, I definitely brought about by Corona, right? So, you know, virtual assistants are incredible. They don't have to be in your office. They can work for 10 different people if they want to. And you can just delegate. One of the human resources that is imperative to my business is an editor. Editing, image editing is so time consuming. It is probably the most consuming thing about my work. And being able to hand that off to somebody who's good and I can trust, it's like taking a giant deep breath. You know, people are like, oh, well, you got to pay for it. It's like, yeah, but that's not the point. The point is you're leveling everything up so that you'll be able to pay for it. And you will have time to create other things, build other things, have what those um, tasks that are sit down and write a list and you know what are the five most menial tasks that I do and find innovative ways to just streamline simplify and be consistent with them so yeah you know, I, definitely, I, uh, I have to second everything you're saying here because uh, from a, from a business a, a business coach perspective uh, I think just coaching in general as a topic if you can find someone who, who sort of works with you, and I would suggest that people find different coaches for different things, because that accountability, Absolutely. That, accountability that, that a coach has that uh, really drives behavior and really drives and reminds you, like, have you done this? What action are you taking? How are you doing this? What are you measuring? How are you assessing? And, uh, and that constant um, uh, sort of... Um, what is that word uh, what I'm looking for? Sounding board. Um, when you have a sounding board and someone is challenging your, your thought processes and, and what to do next, I think that, you know, that really spurs you into taking action and really driving uh, in an innovation in your own self, in your own world, in your own business, especially if you're a, you're a, a smaller business. Um, but the second one, yeah, absolutely. VAs, I cannot agree more. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, I recently, someone asked me for a business profile, and I was going, um, okay, I need to, Where? like, no, then I'm going, okay, well, now, now I've got to go and, because uh, so much yeah, has changed, coming. and I've got to sit down and, you know, because I use Canva for a lot of stuff, and I'm like, uh, I'm not going to do that now. And, and I was going, no, I actually have three VAs, at the end of my phone and I'm going okay let me quickly check who's got capacity who can do this and who can do it in the shortest amount of time because I need this like Friday um, sent it out and literally got feedback within an hour and uh, the cost of what it cost me to to do uh, in comparison to the time it would have taken me I was like yeah you know this is so worth it um, mm -hmm. That's the one thing I used, um, and recently also um, someone's asked me for a portfolio of work, so like all the, the portfolio of evidence of what I've done in the last couple of years. Nice. And I'm saying, wow, I'm like, I really yeah. want to put that together. Because <laughs> there's a, a lot of detail to it, and I was going, You're like, woo! So I asked That's the VA, can you, do this? can you put it like a spreadsheet together with all the stuff that I've done in the last five years? And she's like, yeah, sure, and send to the information. 
And she literally compiled a complete spreadsheet with her year with all the stuff that I've done. And I'm going, Amazing. wow, you know, how much time that would have taken. And I mean, you know, speaking about time, and I think that's what people still, as much as you're passionate about your brand and, and you want to be able to get really involved, I think being able to delegate, uh, uh, have that delegation in your, in your frame of reference to building a business mm. really lends itself to growing, like you're saying, scaling up. Um, yep, because yeah. the moment you sort of go, okay, my time, if I, had, if, I, if, I, if I put an amount to this hour that I'm spending here, like let's say it's $1,000, and you're kind of going, okay, if I'm going to take $1,000 to, to do a, a PDF document of a business profile where I could literally hand that off to someone at $200, right. you're kind of going, oh, I'll spend $200. <laughs> and now you know you actually you say something that's very interesting because um i've heard quite a few people around here that are actually hiring vas in other countries yeah. you know there's now this exchange of well you don't have to be here you just have to be connected and that's easier than ever now you know you can log into your own logins wherever you sit and see whatever i'm doing and it's it's good because, for example, so let's say I'm hiring a South African VA. They make an income based off a dollar, and yeah. I get, you know, I get um, innovation and work at the price that I like. Whether it's local, whether it's international, I mean, I have the designers that I use. They use South African designers. You know, they love them. Uh, they love the work ethic, and so there's a lot of this. Um, open border now as far as work goes where you you had to tr travel before to get to one place to the other and now it's kind of like the opportunities are kind of endless and i do want to say though that with all of these things especially and particularly um starting to hand off and delegate uh, to vas and editors and other people even like if you're writing blogs if you know you're going to need blogging all year next year you need to go out and find yourself the greatest blogger that works for you. That's yeah. your work. That's where you need to go and do your work. And then your blogger does the work for you, right? So that's what I've been doing. I've been just kind of looking like, what takes up time and what do I need? But what I did notice with all the human resource is that it required two things of me. One was a leap of faith. For example, when I was looking at hiring my business coach, Lindsay, I knew 100% that I was ready for a business coach. But now yeah. try to find one. It's great. There's a lot of them out there. Try to find the one that's right for you. So that eventually did happen and we slowly got together. But I realized, you know, in the face of paying her X, Y, Z, it was just slightly out of my, my comfort zone. It put me in a little bit of discomfort. Yeah. But that's where I realized I needed to be. I had to give her what she was worth and I had to let go and take the leap of faith and just trust that this was going to work out and like really gauge it inside. And it did. It was perfect. And from there, that's how I started learning to gauge all the other people I was handing off to. You know, you really have to kind of sit. You don't want to just hand off to anybody. You want to make your team a strong army. But to actually give, to say to somebody, go and create a profile of me over the last 10 years, takes a little bit of like, oh, is it going to be done right? Where is she <laughs> going to get the information? Like there's like 50 million thoughts. You're like maybe I should just do it my, myself. No. <laughs> Deal with the thoughts. Try it out. See how it goes. You know, if maybe she's not the right one. Maybe he's not the right one. Maybe you find somebody else. But you have to trust and start to let go and i know that was a little bit difficult for me but the minute i did it i could see the growth the benefits these people were on my side these people are my champions these people are my team and i i love them i love them yeah, <laughs> it really you know, it's so true because um i'm just uh, thinking now that i don't even know where my va lives i don't i don't know where she's from i just know her number I just know he has her number. She's on WhatsApp. I don't know where she's from. I don't know where she is. She's sent me portfolios on WhatsApp going, well, this is what I've done. This is the things I've done. I'm like, okay, cool. 
nice. pieces together. And like a day later, you get the information, you're kind of going, life couldn't be easier, right? <laughs> One of the things that I, that I am really, really kicking into at the moment is international connection. Yes. So I joined, uh, not to promote everyone, anyone special right now, because I'm not going to mention names, but I'm just going to call it networking communities. There are yes. very many networking communities out there, and um, there are some worldwide ones. What this is affording me at the moment is, I'll give you a simple example. Um, there are networking communities that are sort of based all around the world, and because you belong to the networking company, you kind of go, okay, well, I want to start seeing who's based in London or based in, uh, recently it was Malta. So Malta hosted uh, uh, an what international connection. And I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I, I was like, okay, well, and then you kind of present your, your business. And in this week, I've spoken to people from Egypt, people from um, Malta, um, uh, people from Finland. Um, and you're kind of going uh, and interviewed a few, uh, a UK based coach as well, um, who's actually on the Lifetime series. So international connection uh, and possibilities of what that now is mm. has literally been like it's completely taken out of the ballpark because you're kind of going, well, who the hell do you want to connect to? Just connect. Yeah, choose. I mean, <laughs> now it's, it's really, that's why. You know, I've been thinking about it a lot and, you know, it's globalization started many years ago and we started seeing, you know, the movement of people and changing and, and all of this. But you never really saw the, unless you went to go and live in another country and work there, you never really yeah. saw that shift of, well, you don't actually have to be there to work there. Now, that was crazy. So when that was brought into our consciousness is now especially like very hardcore um there definitely is this internal desire i know for me especially and i and for you and for quite a few entrepreneurs that i know to connect internationally and it's not just for success you know it's for there's a deep desire for connection i want to more i want to see what you're doing i want to know what you're doing um i just i want to know more you know i spoke to a woman yesterday from the country georgia oh wow yeah i was like the what way now i yeah. heard about it most people don't even know it's a country yeah but i thought that it was a new country somewhere because yeah. i'd only i'd only gotten cottoned on to it at some point right and she's like no girl like <laughs> <laughs> been here forever we've got like three or four of our own unique alphabets we don't even speak russian because it's i know it's close to the the russian zones but fascinating you know her name was ekaterine i was like her name, her name was eka you know it was just very very interesting and i was like wow um let's go to georgia you know and i think my my personal work you know, is international. I do a lot of um, corporates internationally. And I think if I can go and be innovative and help and just enjoy all of that, it would be amazing. And the way to make those connections is not as hard as it used to be. If you just pick up, you know, your device mm -hmm. and, and connect somehow. And look, I've noticed that there are certain tools that aren't good for connecting with certain things like for example if you're just going to spam me in linkedin i mean it's i don't think i've ever read i don't think i've ever answered maybe one you know message and i don't know maybe it's me maybe it's them but somewhere along the line you've got to figure out that you're not going to find it there if you're not looking you know if you're not actively engaging with those people but linkedin yeah. itself is such an incredible tool you can go and look for anybody in your industry and listen we used to call it other things in the past but nowadays you're allowed to, it's like a yellow pages it's not stalking it's the yellow pages you know mm -hmm. you want to see what your uh, potential clients are doing you may even want to look at your competition and see what they're up to you know for a good old solid competition so take but action yeah. you know on that note um gary v you know gary v the very famous yeah. gary v um he in 2019 was speaking about um 
what LinkedIn is all about at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, in, in the last, in, I think he mentioned in 2019, but essentially what his point was, what Facebook was to the world 10 years ago, that's what LinkedIn is right now. And if you don't have mm -hmm. a LinkedIn profile and you, if you're not using it, then uh, you're probably not doing well for your business and you could probably yeah. do so much better. You're so, probably missing out quite a bit on, on potential for sure. And, and I think the, the point that you make is spamming people. It's so important not to spam people. You uh, have to and, find and a unique way. Yeah. yeah. The days of writing one email and just blasting people with it. I mean, I have been looking for a photo editor. I, Kev, if I tell you I've gotten 500, maybe even 1,000 uh, offers, I haven't looked at any of them because they're not working for me. Yeah. They're not looking at me and saying, what, is, what does she need? I need a very trustworthy person. I need someone I can relate to on a human level. I don't need a machine. So some people need the machine. You know, If you're selling on Amazon, you're probably going to need a lot of that service. But it's, it's so important these days. It's actually going to take less time and energy. If you just sit down, list who your ideal client actually is, and if you don't know who that is, go and hire your business coach yes. because you will sit for the next three years to try to figure it out. I promise you it was one of the hardest things for me. I love doing so many things, so to figure out what was my point was hard. But once I knew that, I could say, okay, these are the people I want to talk to, and everybody else gets shifted from the list. And I yeah. start focusing just on them. And guess what? If I focus on 100 of them, 10 of them show up. So exactly. that's a lot less yeah. than focusing on a 1,000 blasts and hope and not ever receiving any, you know, real potential business from it. A hot lead, essentially. Yeah. The other one that, that, that is worth mentioning that um, I have I, done a tremendous amount of work on is WordPress, so having your own website and creating one. There's so many templates. There's so many quick, easy ways to do it. Uh, and, I, you know, I've the, the one that I've created, um, people have actually complimented me and goes, like, who did, who did your website? I'm like, I did my website. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I, it's, I do, you know, I've done it. But I've also taken the time to, to do it because when I couldn't afford it, I had to do it. And, mm. you know, when I do anything now, again, get the VA to do it because she does design, she does, you know, you can hand that off and, and kind of know that you have someone that, that, that you trust and that works with you and that's sort of aligned with what you're doing. Um, but Thank WordPress you. and Wix uh, are both really, really awesome yeah. websites. And they have a lot of plugins if you're really gonna go to the extra time and spending time on them. There's a lot of plugins that automate stuff and make things just uh, so much easier. Um, yeah, and listen, with your websites, I mean, I use Squarespace, and I've, I've notoriously always built my own websites. Um, I am not the best at it, and quite frankly, I don't even really enjoy it. So I have now, but it's served me for a good 10 years, you know, so it's, it's been great. But I have now just slowly started finding somebody else to do that for me, just because I know it's not something I'm going to keep on my plate. But... I encourage any human who's running a business, no matter how big or small, to look at Wix, WordPress, to even go to Squarespace. There's so many, uh, so many different options, depending on if you need a cart, if, you, if you're checking out. But go and build a landing page. There's, only, there's a few important things you need on a landing page to start getting you know, uh, traffic. But one of the most important things that I've implemented for the next year is actually hiring somebody to do for us Google and Facebook advertising. Even though I tried to figure it out myself and I did okay and I got quite a lot of hits the first few times, it didn't really translate into much business, even though I got a lot of exposure. So I realized, Lauren, you can't keep figuring out all of these things, no matter how you know yeah. wonderful you think it is. But got to hand it off. So they, they have had so much uh, response to their, the way they do this, that they, their businesses that they work for are just churning. This is all they do for businesses yeah. all day long. And I love it because 
You can get feedback, you can get results, and they can say it's working or it's not working. Very, next, very innovative, yeah. The next one that I think is worth mentioning that I absolutely love is Recurpost. It's mm. R-E-C-U-R-P-O-S-T, Recurpost. Recurpost. Uh, Recurpost, you can, I think you can add up to 10 different social media pages to to, okay. to the system. Nice. And you, you set it up to, you set up libraries, a little bit complicated to figure out, but once you figured it out, you set up libraries and what it is you want to share and you schedule it and you forget about it. <laughs> nice. And I do that, uh, you know, I use that uh, probably once, once a week, sometimes once a month. When yeah, I, you, know, you could totally have your VA doing. She may not be a social media specialist or maybe she is, who knows, but you know, something you could have her churning away at because she could totally manage something or he or them, whoever. Um, yeah, definitely. That's, There's that's, another that's, one called Hootsuit, I think. Yes, Hootsuit also, also does exactly the same. But I yeah, I would recommend that people not do their social, like, like their social media posting to every single post. Like it's time consuming and it's, it's a complete time waster. So if you find, you know, so when I'm, so what I usually do is if I, if I really want to share stuff uh, in terms of a theme for the week, if I like the theme of what I'm hearing and having a conversation or whatever, uh, or, or, or something that I, I'm researching at the moment, I'll end up sharing information around a theme for a week. Um, and right. I just recur post that and it's kind of, go, it goes to like seven different social media pages and it, like from LinkedIn to Twitter, to LinkedIn pages, to Facebook pages, to, to everything. And you kind of go, that's it. Uh, it's done. Yeah. That's a great one. I mean, it is important to strategize that because social media is so powerful and it can be time consuming if you're not doing it right, you it's know? Overwhelming. <laughs> Yeah, and what is right? Right is really right for your business. So when you meet yeah. with a social media expert, they'll just sit and talk to you about who are you, what are your business, they want your authenticity. So for example, I actually still post on my own, um, post like my own Lauren Brits photography, yeah. because I know I, I kind of still, I'm still sort of gauging that one, right? And I am handing it off next year. So that they can start planning campaigns and being very like specific. However, my other business is so sales orientated that I can post all the time. You post, you post, you post. People just want to see what you're doing there the whole time. And yeah. that's kind of what starts that engagement. So it really depends on what your business needs as well. But definitely social media is one to look at handing off. It is tiresome to keep <laughs> yes. thinking about it. And there are people out there that are amazing at it. So, yeah. and it's really, you know, in the greater scheme of things, it, it's probably one of the first things you should hand off because it's from the beginning, if you can get it going, those people are amazing. And check the people you hire. Don't just go with the price. You want to make sure they have had results with their past clients. Yeah, and ask clients. them, I, I, show me what you've done. Show me what, yeah. what, what you're busy doing. Show me what you're working on. I get them to send me a whole barrage of actual evidence and I'm going to nice. okay, click on it and see it. If I can't do that, I don't want to work with you. Right, uh, right. It's still, it, it is, as you're saying, it is part of your brand. It's still your personal messaging. It's still directly related to you, especially when you're a small business. Mm. Um, the last one then, then I want to just talk about 2021. Um, mm. The last one is Linktree. So oh, yeah. Do you know Linktree? Link TR. Yes. It's amazing. And I do love Linktree, but I have a little tip for you about yes. Linktree. And I love Linktree. I love you, Linktree. I used <laughs> you a very long time. And I see a lot of people are using it now because it's that sort of a page where you can put a lot of links, right? Yeah. But I got an amazing tip, and I'm just going to give her a shout out. Heidi yeah. Panovich, she's a phenomenal branding photographer here. She lives in New York. I've met her. She's really wonderful. I've met her virtually. And she's really wonderful. And she said to me the one day, you know what? Linktree is amazing. But if you want more traffic to your website, go and create yourself a page. So laurenbrettsphotography.com or um, leadershipbydesign.com forward slash Instagram. 
for okay. or forward slash social media, you know, yeah. you create that page and put all those links on your page, right? That's <laughs> going to start feeding business straight back to your website. Yes. So all you do is you create exactly the same thing that they already have <laughs> and you just, you just link it yourself. And I've, I actually did that. And so now on my Instagram, if you go there, you'll see the, I've created this page and it looks, it's more beautiful because I can put pictures on it and that, but it's got all the links that I want people to be able to touch. So this is one of the beautiful things that she taught me. It's such a tiny, tiny piece of advice, but it made a huge difference because my traffic on my website went from 100,000 to 200,000. So yeah. in a month. So that was uh, that was pretty significant, but if you don't get it, yeah. Yeah. Like really clever, yeah. But if you don't yet have a website and you have links all over the place and you've got things and videos you want people to see, YouTube and whatever, go and use it. You know, definitely, definitely go and use it. They have a free version, and I found it extremely useful. But there's always an upgrade later on with your own page. Yeah, that's really good advice. I think. That's definitely something I'm going to start doing. <laughs> Thank you, Heidi. I will never stop thanking you for that lovely advice. So um, for the future, for 2021, I'm like, this is, we're talking innovation and what's really useful tools and everything. And I think this is, uh, obviously, this conversation needs to be had more often, more, uh, or at least again, because um, we have so much to share <laughs> in how to do this more effectively. But so, what is it looking like? How are you, you know, taking all consideration of streamlining your business and your life in the last 2020, especially this year because of what it is? Um, how is that? How is um, and as as, uh, as short as possible? How how is that um, influenced where you're going in the future? I mean, uh, in 2021 at least. So, I mean, having that business coach handing off all the tedious work that we you know we can hand off um where's where's lauren going in the future in 2021 regardless of what happens until i'm not here so while I'm here i'm going to maybe identify myself as a planet my own planet and my own universe that's moving through this world and i'm gonna use three things to get me into next year and through next year and to succeed at next year. And one of them is resilience. I'm going yeah. in with resilience, not suspicion, not doubt, resilience. Okay, whatever happens, I will find a bridge over that obstacle. Or I walk around it or over it or I crush it or I burn it, like one of those. Um, two is innovation, can't without it keep streamlining those businesses i have to keep streamlining mine it's the only way i can do more otherwise the brain just gets too bogged down and the machine of business gets too bogged down and lastly my favorite and my own personal goal and my business goal uh, business sort of tagline is consistency consistency breeds success whatever you do do it consistently and just keep refining it so yeah, resilience, innovation, and consistency. Those are my three things. I'm going into <laughs> next year without any like, this is gonna happen. If there's another lockdown, I'll deal with it. If there's this, I'll deal with it. But I'm in the now, and I'm just going every moment at a time, but I'm also looking to my future. So plan yeah. ahead. <laughs> you're, speaking, you're speaking to me as if, as if you were reading my mind. Like <laughs> Maybe I, I am reading your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't. That's exactly where I would you. I would place those three points for the future. I I think what twenty twenty has proved and maybe in my favor, but maybe not, is if I could do what I did this year and I could get through this year, going from in person training uh, environments to completely online to an international business. Okay, well, then I don't, ha I don't ever have an excuse about anything ever again. No. But with that said, <laughs> creating the Lunchtime series and speaking to people all over the world, uh, 2020 looks quite uh, favorable. <laughs> oh, 2021? Oh, yeah. yeah. 2021, at least, yeah. 
Um, yeah. 2021 kind of goes, I'm, I'm looking to it and I'm thinking, wow, I'm, I'm really excited. Me and too. I, I've, had, I've had clients book out time with me already, um, January, February, uh, almost in March. And I'm kind of going, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is really exciting. But I, I wouldn't, I, I, it, it hasn't come with uh, sort of just, just by sitting back and putting my feet up. No, the amount of efforts, and you, I mean, you and I know, I mean, like we've been doing this for t what two, three months already, where we mm. have this every week, you know, so we we know um, the, the the circumstances and the challenges that we also face Absolutely. with politics, with COVID, with personal relation, with personal um, situations happening uh, in our business, being, you know, thriving and getting up and doing it again tomorrow and motivation and all of that. Mm. you know culminated you're kind of going well if i got through this i, I definitely can get through 2021 <laughs> i actually thought about that this morning and i thought you know i wonder if people realize what it takes to, um there you know and to keep doing it all the time it takes a great deal of courage and just uh persistence persistence because you're a human you wake up every day you feel different but the persistence it requires is amazing and i think 2021 is exciting it is exciting it can be if you're sitting there right now and you're not excited about 2021 start doing the work that requires your life requires you to do you might as well <laughs> what else are you going to do and you know negative things will happen but when we are busy doing our work we focus we're so focused on creating actually that you when you look up there it is that's the thing you created and one day you just you wake up in a moment and you're like oh my god like i just arrived in the moment that i thought about five years ago or one year ago or one month ago and yeah. you realize that everything you did ever culminated in that moment and i think and that 2021 is spectacular. I want to add to that that even though, you know, if you look at my social media, if you look at um, what's happening, uh, you know, in my business, from at face value, it looks like, yes, it's really amazing. Wow, wow, wow. But I can, with, with my hand on my heart, tell you that 2020 has been the single handedly, like this, what do you, how do you say that? Single handedly, single -handedly yeah. the most difficult year of my life. I'm sure. I, you know, the stuff that I've gone through this year, the, the highs and lows that I've experienced have been, have been peaks and troughs, like uh, of the opposite ends. Uh, and yet we are doing what we're doing and you're kind of going, okay, cool. You know, there's, there's light at the end of this tunnel and and like that's where your, your resilience, yeah. Resilience, right? Well, that's where your resilience comes in. And I think I think it's I think the reason you speak about it so much and I realize how important it is, is because this is not without difficulty. We yeah. are celebrating our wins and we are like, yes, 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 and we're looking into the future with greatness. But if we sat here and spoke about all the difficulties that had happened. You know, that was where we brought resilience. Those difficulties happened and we said, well, we're not going to take that further. We're going to walk through it with resilience. And resilience doesn't mean you put on the resilience coat and you just walk through it and you just forget about everything. You have to deal. Otherwise, it's going to come back around again. <laughs> you have to deal. And in order to deal with the doo-doos that are happening in your business sometimes, you, you just... That is resilience. That takes courage. But that, if you can not disappear and shrink and, you know, become extremely anxiety-ridden, if you can manage to figure that part out, you can always get to the next part. It's when the difficulty happens, how many people run away, how many people fall apart, how many people give up. Most people give up before they've actually got – they give up just before – they yeah. get what they wanted. And yeah. it's, it's sad because sometimes it takes a lot. I know many things have taken me many years 
Some things have taken me like this. But the resilience that you bring to those things is what makes you successful. And you're consistently resilient. And you're consistently innovative. And you have a winning formula. You just wake up every day and do it again. You have another chance to do it all over again. I couldn't have said it better. Thank you. <laughs> no, but thank you for, for connecting uh, as you do every year. We're gonna we're gonna next week we're gonna chat about what did we say we're gonna chat about our computer <laughs> this this conversation no I love this conversation. I, you know I, I think okay. people can there's so many options and opportunities that people can take take away from just streamlining and, and creating a lot more space in their worlds to really focus and get down to the grind and do what they need to do. So everything that we shared today, I think is going to add so much value. Um, and if people want to get hold of you, where can they go? Yes. So I will be traveling to South Africa soon and doing some work there, but whether it's here or there, you can get hold of me at www.laurenbritsphotography.com. And go ahead and book yourself a complimentary branding session. And we will sit and discover, you know, what it is that you need for your world and for your business. And that's, again, complimentary, www.laurenbridgephotography.com. I will be open for work in South Africa towards the second week in January. And looking forward to anyone who uh, comes forward. I've had a few people come around and have had a great chat with them. So, yep. Fantastic. Lauren, thank you so much for joining me and have a wonderful, wonderful week. Thanks, Kevin. Enjoy the nice warm weather and we'll enjoy the cold weather. (laughs) Talk to you later. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye.